Good morning. Good morning. It's good to see you all this morning. When I first got here this morning, there were like me and <laughs> there were like three of us, the four of us, and I said, Oh, they'll all come to the cemetery, you know. <laughs> so it's good to have some of you here. It's Kyle, we're so glad that you weren't hurt worse than you are. We're glad you're just achy and not broken in a million pieces. So Kyle was in a tractor accident this week, and we're just thankful you're okay. So welcome to worship. We're on this Memorial Sunday. Thanks for coming. We do have another service. Some of you, I'm sure, will come to that at 11 at the cemetery. But for now, let's be in a spirit of worship as we listen to the beautiful prelude and we enter our hearts into this time of praise and worship. Thank you, Debbie. If you're able, would you please stand and follow me in the call to worship? We worship God without fear of persecution, and we know that our freedom isn't free. 
Many Christians around the world fear for their lives and are persecuted for their faith. Men and women across the years have answered the call to free, serve, and protect our nation. The lives of young men and women are not unseen in the eyes of God. God cares for them and their sacrifice, and God cares for their families who mourn their loss. Today, we remember the sacrifices made by our service men and women and their families. All gave some, some gave all, and we are grateful. We pray for these families, Lord, and ask that you comfort them and heal their wounds in Christ's name. Amen. Okay. And now if you'll follow along our hymn of praise number 799, America the Beautiful, verses 1, 3, and 4. This is the weekend that we celebrate Memorial Day. A day when we recognize and give thanks for the service and sacrifice of the men and women who have served in the armed forces. These men and women and their families endure hardship, separation, and sometimes loss for the sake of keeping peace and fighting for justice around the world. We honor their commitment to duty and willingness to sacrifice them themselves. But let us remember that these brave men and women are only human. Even the strongest and bravest of human heroes stands in need of God's grace and the wisdom and guidance we seek in prayer. Let us pray. There have always been wars, dear God, because there have always been problems between human beings. As long as there has been history, battle lines have been drawn and people have fought with one another. We wish it were not so, and that we human beings had the kind of love and insight that would prevent war. But as it is so, and we don't have that kind of love and insight, we offer our prayers for all those who have volunteered or been ordered to fight for the country's wars. We thank you for their courage and often their heroism as they have faced the enemy in battle. We praise their selfless acts in behalf of fellow soldiers. We remember especially all those who presently serve in the armed forces of, of this and other countries and pray for their continued safety and welfare. 
as they encounter danger, give them the insight to understand life and death, and enable them to be at peace with you and with themselves. Bless the families of all who serve in the armed forces, and let our Holy Spirit rest upon them like a mantle to preserve them from anxiety and harm. Grant to each and every one of us a reminder of the way life itself is a struggle between good and evil, and prepare us to defend the good and not succumb to the evil we encounter. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. You may be seated. This is the time of our service where we offer up our tithes and offerings to help support the different ministries. We invite Susie and the kids to come up, and something I forgot to ask you to do is to please sign the register in the pew so we can make sure we have updates to, the, uh, to your information, but if you'll sign those, we'd appreciate that. All right, will the kids come forward with Miss Susie? some decorations. I've got flags and I've got this red, white, and blue and this pretty thing that keeps falling apart. <laughs> I'm losing here. Let's don't pull it all the way apart. I think we're shedding. And if we had some flowers. So listen to this. Let me tell you something. It is, it is a bow. Yeah, it is. Well, you can't because there's no way to put it on you. It's, this is not big enough. I wrap it around you. But listen, um, Memorial Day used to be called Decoration Day. And you know how we decorate things? We make them look pretty, don't we? Yeah. So it started after the Civil War. And some of the soldiers that had um, died in that war, they went and decorated their graves to honor them. And now we call it Memorial Day, which if you think about that mem a memory, you remember. So we stop. And we remember people who have served this country and have died. Um, you know, like, when I say serve, look. Look at these guys and girls. So the Army and the Navy and the Air Force and the Marines and um, did I forget anybody? Yeah, Maybe she's in the, she kind of looks like she has the Navy outfit on, doesn't she? 
and they're, but they, they serve our country, they fight for our country so we can have freedom. Did you know in some places they can't come together and meet like we do here at church? Isn't that sad? That's very sad. But because we have people that fight for our freedom, we're able to come here and meet. And those people can't get together and be God's word. It's just, but we can, can't we? Yeah, we can. It's exciting, isn't it? <laughs> He's about over this excitement. <laughs> so, I'm going to give you a flag. And maybe if he, well, I don't know, if, should he hold that? Just don't let him poke himself there. I don't know if that's a good idea. Here we go. And he's going to eat it. <laughs> he's going to eat it. So we, when we stop and think about um, people who have served our country, and we think about the sacrifice they gave, you know who, who gave the greatest sacrifice? Yeah, here, Jackson, just, why don't you just hold it? We don't want him to eat that thing. It might be dirty. Who knows? Oh, you don't want to eat that thing. No, no, no. No, no, no. So Jesus, did he? Jesus came, and he was the only perfect, um, perfect human being that we've ever had that went to the cross and died for you and me. That, that could be the red on here. And him being perfect could be that white, the pure, and the blue because he, he um, it was hard for him to go through that, wasn't Wait, it? What, what? Yeah, he's got it all wrapped up. Well, you're going to go with Charlene here a minute, and she's going to explain a little bit of this better to you. She's got a couple of books, and we're losing our, we're losing our interest here. So <laughs> We are going to end in prayer. Can you guys fold your hands? Can you fold your hands? Can you fold your hands for me? Can you? Are you ready? All right, hold your flag still because we're going to pray. We're going to hold your flag. Can you put your, put your other hand up here? Show me how you show me how you hold your hands when we do this at school. How do we do we do it like this or like this, don't we? Yeah. Dear God, we thank you for allowing us to have people that will help us be free to serve you and worship you and learn more about you. We just thank you for that. It's such a great gift. And we thank you for the best gift of all, and that's Jesus who came for us and he loves us and he died for us and <clears throat> we just want him to live in our hearts so we can love others. In Jesus' name, amen. Um, hey, there goes more of my stuff. Oh, no. yes. mm-hmm. One time, my other had a sad wet, and then go to the doctor, and then it. He had a tractor wreck? I know, and look, he's here. We're so thankful, aren't we? Yes, we are. We're very thankful for that. All right, come on, guys. Oh, while the kids are headed out to their class, just a reminder that if you're singing next Sunday with us, we're going to practice after worship uh, for a few minutes. And then also the men are going to gather for a men's Bible study next Sunday at 930. Don't know that they'll stick with that time all the time because of coming together as uh, Bible study with couples and uh, that sort of thing. But to get rolling, they're going to meet next Sunday, 930, for a men's uh, group, men's Bible study. So let's pray for that success and that that'll go really well. So thankful for them doing that. So Jeff uh, Coker is kind of spearheading that with some help from Jeff Nichols. So we're thankful for that. Are there joys and concerns you all would like to share this morning? Before we prepare our hearts, Jeff. It's been a rough week. I want to say thank you for all the concern and prayers that my family has received. As most of you know, Kyle had a tractor wreck. It is very, very fortunate to be with us today with only bumps and bruises interrupted. Probably should have killed him. And we also found out last weekend he's going to be a daddy again. Aww. So when they were doing the gallstone check, they found another one more me. So we got a total surprise. <laughs> so I just want to say thank you. And again, I'm sorry. And 
I'm very thankful to have you guys as my family. And that's the way I think of everybody here. Thank you. Amen. Such excitement. How's Mike this today? Is he having a good week? Oh, good. Okay. Good. Good. That's good news. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you. They have the best stories. <laughs> yeah. Mike and Paul. Yeah. 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 Yeah
and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. If you'd like to follow along, it's short <laughs> reading this morning, um, 116 of Psalms, and we're just going to look at verse 15. It's a very poignant verse for this particular Sunday. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. I like that scripture. Uh, it's on the back of my dad's tombstone, actually, but it's a, it's a reminder that the sacrifices that we make or the lives that we live they're not hidden from God, but God sees us, God knows us, God understands our hearts. And when we are no longer here, God still sees. And those who belong to him continue to live on with him. And so I do like that particular passage, especially for today as we think about those young men and women who offered their lives up in service to our country. I read a story many years ago, a true story about these two young men who decided to serve in the army together uh, when World War II, when we got involved as a country in World War II, and they decided they would go into the service together. And so they joined the military, and fortunately, they were able to stay together. They went through boot camp together and all their training together, and then unfortunately, they got shipped over to France where the fighting was getting really bad, and they, they just uh, missed the storming of the beach at Normandy, but they still ended up over in that area. And so they had a lot of close calls throughout their service together. And one day the fighting got so bad and um, they were they were just, just inundated. They couldn't even see where they were because of bombs hitting and just the dirt flying and the smoke and the fire and, and the casualties. And the commander called retreat and sent them um, into a foxhole. And Jim looked around for his buddy, Ed, but he didn't see him. And so he began to ask, has anybody seen my friend Ed? And nobody had. And the commander said, stay put, soldier, but he didn't listen. He climbed over the wall of the foxhole and he went through the smoke and the fire and the casualties looking for his friend, Ed. And what seemed against all odds, he found him and he was mortally wounded, and he got on the ground beside him, and he put Ed's head in his lap. And when he did, Ed opened his eyes, and he looked at Jim, and he said, I knew you'd come. And it was the last thing he said. And so Jim then had no choice but to go back to the foxhole, because he, it was, there were still these shells going everywhere. And he went back into the foxhole, and the commander said, was it worth it? And he said, absolutely because he knew I'd come. You know, as Christians, we pray for an end to wars because of situations where our family members, our loved ones, you know, they, they go into these battles and they, they know that they could lay down their lives on our behalf because freedom, as we know, isn't free. And as Christians, we, we want to see an end to that. We want there to be peace in the world but until there is, we continue to pray for and remember those folks who are serving. I had a debate one time with a, a member of another church who said that patriotic services did not belong in worship. And I saw their point. You know, we worship God and God alone. But, I, but I, my thought was we're going to have to agree to disagree <laughs> because I believe that 
we need to pray for our country and we need to pray for our service women and men who are in harm's way or possibly in harm's way and that we need to remember them because so many times these young men and women come back and are forgotten and those wounds and those scars that they that they get while they're serving you know, they they try to cover them up with all kinds of different ways but if we can remember them if we can pray for them if we can invite them in if we can share the love of Jesus with them, it, it could be all the difference in the world for them. The Bible tells us in John 15, 13, greater love has no one than this, that one lay down his life for his friends. Not having counted the cost, those young men and women who gave their lives for the greater good of this nation secured our freedom. They were friends who fought alongside of each other and sometimes one came home and another didn't. As Christians, we also remember that one who was greater than any, who gave his life for each one of us, that one who said, I no longer call you servants, but I call you friends. And he laid down his life for each one of us so that we could be forgiven of our sin, so that we could be set free. As you know, our youngest daughter, Becca, is serving in the military. She's full-time Army National Guard. She's a career counselor, but her first MOS is a combat medic. So she's a licensed EMT, and she's seen some things in that training that I never dreamed she would have to go through as she was being trained. Those of you who are doctors or nurses understand what that's like to go through that kind of training. And she's uh, very much an advocate for the prevention of soldier suicide. So many times she's called us and said, I got somebody that I'm trying to talk to who is uh, determined to take their own life. Will you pray for them? And so we'll begin to pray for her and we'll begin to pray for them. And at some points, nothing she could say or do would stop that process. And that person decided to take one of God's greatest gifts, their own life, and end it because they couldn't see any hope or any way out and they couldn't get past the things that they had seen, especially those young people who are serving abroad in, into combat where they um, see things that nobody should ever have to see, honestly. I had a, con um, a conversation with her and I said, who takes care of you? She said, mom, you guys do, God does. So we pray for her all of the time. In 2021, the Veterans Administration estimated that there were nearly 20,000 homeless veterans. And those were the count of veterans who sought shelter in emergency shelters. Those homeless veterans who don't get counted, who live in their cars or live on the street, is estimated to be another 10,000 homeless veterans. These are folks who get out of the service and they come home and they just can't cope. And so a lot of them have mental disorders like PTSD. And some of them, the Wounded Warrior Project estimated uh, that just last month, over 10,000 veterans uh, sought help for substance abuse. One study shows that combat veterans have a higher divorce rate by 62% than regular everyday people. The VA also reports that veterans are more likely to suffer from PTSD than civilians. Now that's just veterans, those who served but didn't go into combat. Combat veterans, it's estimated that one in five have PTSD. And it's estimated that women's PTSD is higher than that, than that of men. One study showed that 15% of the people who served in Iraqi freedom have PTSD. And it goes down clear to World War II, it's only 2%. But you know, my, my guess is those World War II veterans didn't talk about it because that was the way they were wired. You picked yourself up by your bootstraps and you went on. And a lot of them ended up drinking and finding other ways to self-medicate than to seek help. The reason I share these statistics with you is that the church can offer help and hope to those folks who continue to serve or who have served in the military. And first responders have similar um, 
uh, results to having seen trauma and traumatic things as combat medics do or combat veterans do. But the church has hope to offer because Jesus Christ is the healer of our soul. He can take those wounds and he can help heal the broken places in our lives. The Great Commission tells us that we are to go and tell the good news of Jesus' love. Jesus understands. He who did not count the cost of giving his life understands their thought process, understands these veterans who were willing to serve in that way. And he can offer hope. He can offer healing. Jesus calls us to go beyond the protective uh, walls of our church and go into the world where we're not so comfortable and share the good news of his love. Friends, when we take the love of Jesus outside of these walls and we feed somebody who's hungry or we clothe a child whose parents can't afford to get clothing or we spend time with them and ask them to offer some hope or we minister to those that are hard to minister to or with, we offer Christ's love. And when we offer that hope to those who are struggling, maybe those military folks who are struggling with re-entry into civilian life, and we tell them about Christ's love, invite them to our church, or in any other way where we reach out to those who are broken, those who are lost, those who are hurting and feel like they don't have a place, when we look outside of our own walls and we go into the world and do what Christ called us to do, to proclaim the good news, we stand a good chance of making a friend who will look us in the eye and say, I knew you'd come. Amen. If there's anybody here today who would like to accept Christ as your Lord and Savior, or if you'd like to join this fellowship of believers, or if you'd like to rededicate your life to Christ, we invite you to come forward as together we stand and sing our response hymn number 807, My Country Tis of Thee.